autocomplete.js is a great little nine kilobyte JavaScript library that lets us add autocomplete search functionality to our CMS collections in Webflow. For example, I can type ham, and now all of a sudden I see graham crackers, champagne, and split pea and ham soup. Or I could type wine, and I get all the different wine varieties here, like Cave Springs Dry Riesling. I built an example blog that lets us search by category, so I'll show you how to build that in Webflow right now. First, we'll get something really basic on the page, then I'll walk you through some configuration options, and finally, we'll look at styling this so that it matches the feel of your website. All right, let's get into it. Hey there, Web Bay. Okay, if you watched my previous videos on setting up CMS Nest and CMS Filter, then this won't be anything new to you. I'm just reusing that example website. Anyways, I have a search input field here, and down here I have a CMS collection that's holding the data for all of my categories. Now, each one of these has a tag and a link, and I set it up for FinSuite's CMS Nest and CMS Filter, which I already told you about, but let's go ahead and add autocomplete by going through the documentation and seeing how to do this. So we're gonna start with the installation, and we're gonna be importing it via CDN today, so I'll copy this to Clipboard and come back to Webflow and head to the page settings. And right here inside of the head, I'm gonna add this after FinSuite scripts, and I'm gonna add the defer attribute, and we'll save that. Next, we're gonna want the autocomplete CSS. They have three different options that we can choose from. I'm just gonna use this one that they have right here in the getting started guide, and then I'll show you the other options later as well as how to style it ourselves. So back in the page settings, we're gonna drop this right in the top here above everything else. We want our CSS to load as fast as possible and first before everything, so we'll, we'll chuck it up there. All right, we'll save that. And we're done with that, so let's go on to usage. Now, first we need to define our HTML. We've already added the input to our Webflow project, but it wants an, us to add an ID of autocomplete. So going back here, let's come up to our search input, and we'll give it that ID of autocomplete, just like that. Okay, next, import the script. Hey, we've already done that, so that's done. And then create a new instance of the autocomplete.js engine after import and add the needed configuration. Let's walk through how to do this now. I'm gonna set up a code sandbox file that I have right here. So let's go ahead and grab this link and add that to our Webflow project also. And this is gonna be the last script that we wanna load. So we'll also defer this one. And this is index.js. And we'll close that script tag. And now we'll publish. Okay, so here in the code, I've got this boilerplate set up from FinSuite, which just waits for CMS Nest to finish um, all of its operations. If you Google something like FinSuite CMS filter API, and I click the first result here, I'll show you where I got this code snippet. It's right here. I'm just using this. In this case, they're using CMS filter, but I'm using CMS Nest as uh, what I'm waiting for. So we know once we get within these two sideways mustaches or curly brackets, that CMS Nest has finished doing everything it needs to do. Since this script has an async tag on it, if we go and look over here, we don't have any control when, this, when CMS filter and CMS Nest finish, so that's why we're using the code snippet to wait. The very first thing we wanna do is select all the categories. So in a categories variable, I'll use the document.querySelectorAll method, and I'll pass it our own custom attribute of WB autocomplete equals category. Now we need to make sure that we add this to our Webflow project. So I'm just gonna select this and copy and come back to Webflow. And the things we want are down here, these categories. So we'll get the, the tag, which is this, um, this text div block. And I'm gonna add the custom attribute. So WB autocomplete equals category. Zoom out. And let's publish that again. All right. If we go ahead and console.log, all of our categories, you'll notice that we have duplicates in our published page. So I'm opening the published page and now I'm opening Chrome DevTools. And if I come up, you'll see there's 173 items in this note list, but our CMS only has 97 categories. So the reason this is duplicating is because CMS Nest is adding duplicates to all of these different blog posts that have the relevant categories. So we can use a set to get rid of our duplicates pretty easily. So we'll, we'll define a new set called category set now we'll loop through all of our categories that we got with query selector all, and that takes its own function that gets a parameter of each category. So this function is going to run on every category in our categories variable. And we wanna use this dot add method that exists on sets, and we're gonna add the categories text content. 
So whatever the category is, it's like film and whatever, or de math and physics or something, that text is gonna be added to this set. And since sets can't contain duplicate entries, if it's a duplicate entry, it's just not gonna get added. Now we wanna cast it back to an array because autocomplete expects us to give it an array as the data property. So we say unique categories array equals category set with the spread operator. So we're just going through each individual entry in the category set and then wrapping it in these brackets, which tells uh, JavaScript that this is gonna be an array. Okay, and now we're back at where we were in the documentation for autocomplete.js. We need to create a new instance of autocomplete and we can do that just like this. Now autocomplete gets a configuration options object that we can pass right within the function parameter here. So we open up those curly brackets and I provided a link to the configuration files. We'll look at this once we get something up and running on the page. The very first thing we'll define is the selector. This is what we apply to the input item to let autocomplete.js know what our input item actually is. And then we need to define the data that it needs to use for autocomplete. In this case, we've already gotten it in this unique categories array, but the data takes an object. So we have that by opening and closing these curly brackets. And then there's a source property. And the source is where we'll pass that unique categories array. Next, we just need to call autocomplete.js.start, open close parentheses, and we'll save that and see if we got something working. I'm gonna refresh here. And you can see that default CSS that we loaded from autocomplete has taken over and made our um, scroll bar look different than how we have it styled in Webflow. Anyways, I can start typing, say film and cinema or sports uh, or anything and it's, you know, FinSuite CMS filter is filtering the items and the autocomplete JS is giving us these options. Now, some problems we have already is if I click, it doesn't actually update. So we'll go ahead and look at some of the options that we can start fixing things. The first option I'll talk about is threshold. Threshold is the number of characters that the user needs to type before autocomplete starts working. I think one, if you type one character, it start, should start uh, filtering. But if you have a huge uh, array to filter from, then something higher like two or three might make more sense. Debounce, this is the amount of milliseconds that it's gonna wait before it populates the autocomplete data. Search engine strict, this is gonna make sure that all the characters are together. We can also pass the string of loose here. We'll have a look at that in a minute once we get all the code generated. Next, we can specify some options on the result item. So we're opening and closing brackets here for a JavaScript object, and we'll say highlight equals true. And now if I save and come back and refresh, we can see that already I'm getting like this highlighting on film because I typed F-I-L in here. And we can see the debounce is making it wait just a little bit before um, actually making anything happen. And if I set threshold to three and save and refresh, now I type F-I and notice there's no filtering happening. But as soon as I type L, now the filtering starts happening. Or S-P-O, got to wait for the O for it to start filtering and show us sports. Let's change this back to one and continue on with the options. We can set the max results to five. You could set this to whatever you want. I'm just gonna use five in this case. And then events. So this is where we're gonna take care of that problem where when we click, it doesn't repopulate this, the, uh, the input field there. So we wanna look for an event on the input and that's gonna get its own object. And we want the event of the input selection. And this is gonna get a function and the function gets an event as a parameter. And then within these two curly brackets, we'll define what we want to happen. So the very first thing is we wanna get the selection that's made. And we can get that with this event.detail.selection.value. So this is getting what the user clicks and storing it in a variable called selection. The next thing we need to do is actually put that selection into the input search. So we'll say autocomplete.js.input.value equals selection. So we're just assigning it that value. And if I save and come back and refresh, start typing FIL and click, now you can see it populates the data. However, we're not actually filtering. And this, this will become apparent if I say something like, maybe, no, that's a bad example. Let's search, what does F give us? Fitness and exercise. So this is populating in the search here, but notice we're not actually filtering by it. So FinSuite's CMS filter, for whatever reason, is not recognizing that. But we can get around that by just simulating a, essentially a change here. Now, if I press space and back, then it's filtering by exactly what we want. So I'll show you how to simulate an event here in just two lines of code. We're gonna create a variable called simulated event and that's gonna be a new instance of this event object. We want it to be an input type event and we will set bubbles to true. And then we'll get our input element and dispatch an event to it called simulated event. And if I save now and refresh, 
if I start typing, now it's gonna update the filter as soon as we click it. So, so that's a nice little trick to simulate that the user has maybe typed something or that this has been updated. The other thing we can look at is setting this to loose. And if I save and refresh, now when I type film, you can see like artificial intelligence shows up because F, I, and L aren't all together in fashion and style. So depending on what you want, you can set this to strict or loose. I'm gonna keep it at strict. Now this styling doesn't exactly match the theme of our website, so let's look at how we can customize that. If I go back to the documentation, on the left here, there's this extras styles, and we'll see that autocomplete gives us three distinct styles. There's this first one, the second one, which is a little bit less um, overstyled, and this third one. I kind of like to choose the, like, the unstyled option first and then style it myself from there. So say we wanted this one, we could just copy that, and here in the page settings, we'll just paste that in and save and publish and refresh. And now we'll see the styling is quite different. And I like this a little bit better, but it's still a bit off. So we want to customize this 100%. I think the best way to do this will be to just download the CSS that um, Autocomplete is using and customize it ourselves. So the way we can do that. First, I'm going to open up page settings again. And I'm going to get this link to the CSS file. And we'll copy that, open up a new window and paste and go. Now this is the minified CSS, but this is pretty hard to work with. So if you go in the URL and just get rid of the dot min, so it's just the dot CSS, then we'll get the CSS that's a lot easier to work with. So I'm just going to control A, copy this and come back to Webflow and I'll actually delete this CSS here. The other thing is that this requires, using the link tag requires our website to make a network call, which is why we get the flash of unstyled content or differently styled content in this case. Like we styled it one way in Webflow and that's how it loads, but then the autocomplete JS CSS loads and like flashes to whatever it was. So if this thing's above the fold, your user might see the flash and that's kind of inconvenient. Anyways, we'll go ahead and drop a embed in so that we can style these live on our page. And I'm just gonna drop it in at the top here and open up some style tags. And then we'll paste all of that CSS in there. Now the CSS is looking for these autocomplete wrapper, autocomplete wrapper, and then finds a direct child of an input and lots of different things. Hopefully if, it's pretty basic CSS, um, but I understand if you're new to coding, it's it can be quite a lot to uh, digest in one second. So we'll just start with something basic and go from there. The other problem we're gonna have is that Webflow does not work well with camel casing uh, in style names. So what I'm going to do to get around that is that autocomplete gives us this name uh, property that we can add to our options. And rather than autocomplete, I'm going to say auto-complete and put a comma at the end there. And I saved, but I'm not going to refresh yet because I want to show you that here on the search wrapper, it, it created a wrapper called autocomplete underscore wrapper, and this is kind of what we're gonna target for our styling, but you'll notice it's camel case. However, since we changed this to autocomplete, that's not camel case, and now if I refresh, we can see that the naming here is autocomplete underscore wrapper that's not camel case. However, the CSS that we loaded also um, is looking for camel case, so we have to change that as well. So what I'll do is I'll just copy this and come back to Webflow and in our embed, all of these autocomplete wrappers with camel case, I got to get rid of those. So you could do this probably faster in a text editor, you know, with find and replace all. But I'm just going to do all of these so that our name in the CSS matches the name property that we gave it in JavaScript. I'm almost done. And I'll try to speed this up maybe on the video. Maybe not though, because I'm talking through it. And we'll save. Okay. Now what we can do is we can edit any of this CSS here and it will, it will automatically style on our live site. So say we want our width to be 200 pixels instead. Oops, I didn't mean to save it like that. And we save. And let's say we also want to change the color of the, what was it? Um, oh, it's not showing up here because we broke it on purpose. But let's go ahead and publish and see what we get. Okay, if I refresh. Now we're getting that styling from our embed. And if I search like this, okay, things are working again. Let's say I wanna change this like pink color to 
something more purple. What I could do is I can inspect this element. And unfortunately, when I click out of it, it hides that element. So we can see right here, there's this hidden attribute on our unordered list item. If I just delete that, it's gonna come back and now I can see, okay, these are the things that I wanna style. And I wanna style this mark selector. And if we come into our styles here, we can see, okay, this has got a style of this 255, 122, 122. And we could hone in on something that maybe looks good. I have no idea what looks good because I'm not that great a, a developer, but let's grab the hex for that. And actually, I think it, it doesn't matter. We can do RGB or hex. Uh, I don't know how to copy a RGB here though. So let's go back to hex and I will copy that. And back into Webflow, now we're in our CSS and we're gonna look for when we're selecting mark. So here, the autocomplete wrapper is looking for a direct child of an unordered list then a list item, and then that span of mark, or I guess not span, this is an actual HTML tag. And so we'll just change color here from what they had defined to what we want. And so let's save and publish. And refresh. And now we're getting that color that we want. The very last thing I wanna to touch on is look, this is different in Webflow than what it is live. So let's try to get that as close to what we can. And this is pretty easy to do actually because we have the styles loaded on the page, but we haven't told our input field to absorb those styles. And if we look at the CSS, we can tell, okay, there's this autocomplete wrapper and then everything is inside of that. And so bum, bum, bum. If we go to Webflow here, we have not in the body. Let me bring this down a little bit. So we're in our inspector. And then I'm just going to inspect this item. We can see it gets a div with a class of autocomplete wrapper already around it. So all we've got to do is drag in another div block. We'll put it right there and then we'll put our input right inside that. And this div block needs to get that class of autocomplete wrapper, the same one that we're targeting in our CSS and that we set the name property, property to in JavaScript. Now, if I click enter, oh, I think there's an underscore. Yep, you'll see it changes. And as we style away in our project on this HTML embed, we'll notice the changes happening live in designer. So say I want this to be 400 pixels instead. Boom, it's changed. All right, so that's how you can implement a really cool autocomplete system with CMS filter, CMS nest, and kind of a complex sort of filtering setup that you have here. If this helped, be sure to like and subscribe, thumbs up, all that good stuff, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.